we want to find an equation of a polynomial function with real coefficients having zeros negative six and positive i. So there are two important things to remember about this problem. First, if we have these zeros of a polynomial function, it gives us information about the factors of the function. And also, if we have complex zeros, complex zeros always come in conjugate pairs. So what I mean by that is if the zeros or roots are r sub one comma r sub two and so on, then our polynomial function must contain a factor of x minus r sub one, x minus r sub two, and so on. Also, it's possible to include a constant here, which would not affect the zeros of the function. We always let a equal one unless we have fractions in our binomial factors, which we want to clear. And then again, if we have complex zeros, these will always come in conjugate pairs. So if a plus bi is a zero, then so is a minus bi. So for our example, notice how one of the zeros is positive i, which we can write as zero plus i, which means the conjugate of this would be zero minus i, or just negative i. So the zeros of our function are negative six, positive i, and negative i. So from here, we know the factors of our function. Our function must contain a factor of x minus negative six, which we'll simplify in the next step. A factor of x minus positive i, and also a factor of x minus negative i. Again, we don't need a constant here because notice how our binomial factors do not contain any fractions. So our function f of x would have a factor of, this is the same as x plus six. We'll leave this as x minus i, and we'll write this as x plus i. Now we're going to multiply these. We can only multiply two at a time. Normally we work from left to right, but because these two are conjugates, we're actually going to find this product first. And again, we can do this because multiplication is commutative, which means if we change the order of the multiplication, it does not change the result. So again, here we'll have four products. One, two, three, and four. So a possible function f of x will still have a factor of x plus six. And now we're going to find this product x times x is x squared. Then we'll have x times positive i, that's going to be plus xi. And then we have negative i times x, so we'll have minus xi. Notice how these have a sum of zero. And then we'll have negative i times positive i, that's negative i squared or minus i squared. Remember, i squared is equal to negative one. So let's go ahead and simplify this again. f of x equals the quantity x plus six times law of x squared, xi minus xi, that would be zero. And then we'll have minus i squared, but this is the same as minus negative one, which becomes plus one. Now we'll find this product. Again, we'll have one, two, three, four products. So f of x, equals x times x squared, that's x cubed. x times one, that's plus x. Six times x squared, that's plus six x squared. And then six times one, that'd be plus six. This would be a polynomial function that has the given zeros. But let's go ahead and write these terms in descending order. So we'd have x cubed. We want the x squared term next, so we'll have plus six x squared plus x, plus six. This degree three, your cubic function, would be a polynomial function that has the given zeros. One thing we can do to verify this is to graph it. Remember, if the zeros are real, they would be the x-intercepts of the graph. So if we graph this, even though we have three zeros, we should only have one x-intercept, x equals negative six. So here's the graph of our function. Notice how we do have an x-intercept of negative six. And even though we have two other zeros, because they're imaginary, we do not have any other x-intercepts. I hope you found this helpful.